Let us reveal the World Rugby Women's Team of the Decade in association with MasterCard. Maggie, well done on making uh, the selection for this team. Never in doubt. I don't think there was too much speculation about who'd wear that seven shirt in the team of the decade. Um, I'm going to have a chat with you about what it means to, to receive this award in just a moment or two. But first of all, let's hear from two of your former England teammates, also on the list, Emily Scarrett, who was a unanimous choice, and Danielle Water. Two of the golden girls of the women's team of the decade. Who is more golden out of the two of you? It's quite hard to pick, actually, at this point. Who'd like to put their hand up and be the more golden? Nolly with that light on her head at the moment. <laughs> I was going to say more through... the, uh, <laughs> the blonde. <laughs> Very good. I don't think anyone, Alex, will ever compare to the Emily Scarrett's goldenness. That is very true. You are actually, and, and if we're going on selection, then Emily, you are the golden girl because you were the only unanimous choice in this 15. 
Um, I think it's fair to say you've collected more awards than caps over the last 12 months, um, <laughs> continuously in a in a dress at, at some sort of podium somewhere in, in, in the world. How has it been for you? How, what does this award mean to you and how's the last 12 months been? Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, hasn't it? Just not everything going on in the world for one, but um, yeah, the rugby world's been a bit bit crazy for me the last 12 months. Like you say, picking up a couple of awards, which you never expect. I think I said it on the night to you that you play a team sport, you don't expect to pick up individual accolades. Um, which, so it's a bit strange and you kind of feel like you probably cheated the other 14 girls out of it a little bit. But um, yeah, it's, it's super special to kind of be um, recognised in that way and I guess again with this it's it's awesome and to be put in a team with some of the names that are in that team is is pretty cool. It's crazy because what it's allowed me to do is just look back at the decade and see how far I came as a player you know the experience and the journey I went on but more so just the game as a whole and and actually it kind of in my head kicks off in that World Cup back in 2010 in London and and then you kind of go through the, the following two two World Cups and and now the girls playing live on BBC and having nearly a million viewers and you know it's just absolutely amazing and and to be part of that journey and to um, to have played a small part in changing how people perceive the women's game sounds really cheesy but um, I think that's what's pretty cool for me about being part of that team and also the fact that with that pack, I won't ever have to, or that backline, I won't ever have to make a tackle at fullback. <laughs> well, it is a heck of a team, and congratulations to both of you for your selections. As we said, two of the Golden Girls. Um, if only we could see you all in action, but Emily, that's over to you now. Good luck for the next 12 months or so. Molly, we'll see you in 2030 for the next selection process. Um, but well done to both of you. Lovely to chat and keep up the great work. Well, great to see smiles on faces of two of the Red Roses and Maggie, a smile for you as well. I don't think it was ever in doubt who was going to wear the seven jersey in this player, uh, this team of the decade, I should say. But for you personally, what does it mean to be recognised in this way? It means so much, you know, to be alongside many other greats over the last 10 years um, is quite special. And look, there's many other players that really could have played that number seven jersey um, who unfortunately didn't make it in that team. So. It's just nice to be in that squad and I'm really very honoured and it's just great to see the women's game come so far and to have so many players, you know, potentially could have made that, that team. It's a, it's a strong women's game and it's getting stronger and stronger, I think, every year and yeah, I'm just very honoured. Well, you've obviously helped to build a bit of a legacy with England at the moment. We mentioned obviously you and Nolly and Emily Scarrett as well. You are three of the eight English women represented in the team, also six New Zealanders, and we're going to hear from some of them a little bit later on. And by my maths, which has never been very strong, that leaves just one other player, not from England or New Zealand in the team. And let's now hear from the lady picked at number eight, and that is Frances Safi Ndai. Ben, quand tu m'as euh, énoncé la, la liste, c'est vrai que c'est une équipe euh, exceptionnelle, magnifique. Euh, voilà, c'est des joueuses euh, contre qui la plupart j'ai eu la chance euh, de jouer, qui sont des joueuses exceptionnelles. Donc c'est vraiment euh, Je suis vraiment très honorée de pouvoir faire partie de cette équipe, d'autant plus que euh, je suis la seule française et euh, voilà, je suis euh, assez chauvine et fière de représenter la France. Il y aurait eu beaucoup de joueuses qui auraient pu me remplacer, que ce soit en France ou dans d'autres pays. Mais voilà, très honorée et très heureuse de pouvoir représenter la France. Here we are with the team of the decade five, in fact, from the Black Ferns. And well, ladies, firstly, the reaction for you to be named Linda in this team. Oh, I had to. Um actually looked twice to make sure that they had the right name on their letter that was sent through but it's absolutely privileged and um, I know that there's plenty of other um, women out there that could have easily taken this um, position. Fee, to have this number of Black Ferns in this uh, team of the decade, what does that mean? Oh, I'm extremely proud. I mean, we've um, built a lot of great legends in the Black Ferns and I'm sure that there'll probably, there should probably be more girls up here but um, I'm just extremely proud to be amongst all these girls in these Black Ferns. Now, Kelly, you have to tell me who's the character out of the squad, and, and, and don't be shy letting us know. Um, probably to your far left, once <laughs> once upon a time. Why? Um, many reasons, but uh, we, we won't say them today. But you know, there's probably still a few about. Um, mainly some of the young girls. Uh, Kendra sometimes pops up, has a has a word or two to say. But um, yeah, I guess all the girls are quite quite characters in, in their own way. Kendra, your reply. Uh, yeah, it's actually Kelly. She's a silent assassin. She's the funny one in the team. But now we've got a lot of girls who are very funny and it's enjoyable about the team and that's what keep, makes you coming back, keep coming back. And for you, Skip, just tell me 
not so much the sacrifices, but, but what you have to do to, 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 to be so good for this long. Um, I think that's what kind of makes makes this group so special is that it's the legacy that's been built on from the past players and we are trying to pave the way for the young girls um, coming through and that was just a perfect example of it. We had all the young girls in here today um, here to support next year's World Cup but for us it's what we can do now um, for the future. We'll leave it on an absolutely inspirational ladies. Congratulations on being voted into the team of the decade. Well done.